welcome or welcome back to my channel where we take it easy like Sunday morning, baby. Before we get started, I just want to say I just washed my hair. So if you see it dripping or whatever, ciao, I'm fresh. <laughs> so as you can tell by the title of this video, today we are talking about purpose. Now, this is a conversation that over the years I've heard so many people talking about there's so many of us that have been on the well, what is my purpose journey and like who am I and why am I here and there's nothing wrong with that at all it's very normal and natural to to have a desire to understand why you're here and what part you play in the bigger picture of life so today instead of focusing on what your specific callings or purposes are <laughs> in this life. We're going to talk about three practical things that you can do any day, anytime, anywhere to live a purpose-filled life. Instead of looking for one specific thing that God has created you for, one specific calling or one assignment that he's given you, we're going to focus on how to live a life that is full of purpose day in and day out. <laughs> Number one is community service. Giving back is a very simple way to add more purpose into your life. Going out and volunteering your time, your talents, your efforts, maybe even your money, is such a beautiful way not only to help others, but also gives you work to do that is very meaningful. I feel like one of the reasons that so many of us have been on or are on this big search for our purpose in life is because we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. We want to be a part of something meaningful. We want to be a part of something that leaves a lasting positive impact on people's lives, on the world. Giving back to your community and being of service and helping those in need is a wonderful way to fulfill all those needs that you have to be a part of something great, something bigger, to leave a lasting impact, to leave a legacy of love on this earth. So get out there and help and serve in your community. If you're interested in doing community service, but you're not sure exactly where to start, um, I would suggest to look into local shelters in your area, food banks, check with local churches and see how you can help and serve with the programs that they already have established. You can volunteer at schools, hospitals. There are so many ways to get out into the community and give back. If you want to know what your purpose is, First and foremost, your purpose is to serve. That's exactly what Jesus came here to do. He was a servant leader. He served. That's what he taught us to do, to have an humble heart and humble spirit and to give back and serve and help others. So number one is community service. Number two, the second thing we're going to talk about is filling the gap. Now, what do I mean by that? At my job, I was getting frustrated because I noticed that there was a missing piece to the puzzle when it came to um, the onboarding process for a group of people that we were working with. I'm like, man, every time we have somebody new come, it's the same kind of chaos because there's not a written format that we can follow every single time to know this is what we need, this is what we need to do, this is these are the questions we need to ask so on and so forth. And I realized, because the Holy Spirit spoke to me, <laughs> I realized that I could continue to be frustrated or I could fill the gap. I have the skills and I had been through the process a couple of times. So I knew the basics of what we needed in order to be prepared for the next group. So it's so easy it's so easy to fold your arms and say, well, somebody should have done this or they don't pay me enough for this or that's not my job or this, that, and the third. But uncross your arms, baby. You have been called to fill the gap. You have been called to be the sazon <laughs> in this place, okay? If you find an area in your life or you see something in the community 
where you're frustrated because you're like, somebody should be taking care of this. Somebody should be doing something. Somebody should, maybe you're that somebody. Just maybe you are that somebody. We're talking about purpose here. We're talking about living a purposeful, purpose-filled life. You do that, again, by serving. That's what purpose is all about. It's not about me, 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 and what I can get and how I can make myself feel better and look better. And it's about giving back. It's about service. So think about some situations in your life where you might be able to fill a gap, where you might be able to meet a need. And not necessarily because this is your job or because somebody's paying you to do it, but because you see, because you see that there's an issue and you know you have what it takes to correct it. Be mature. <laughs> Be mature. Fill the gap. Fill the gap. Just think about it. You might be praying, God, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? What have you called me here to do? And he's like, if you open your eyes, son, and look around, I put you in a place where there are many issues, many problems, many gaps that you are equipped to fill. <laughs> you want purpose? Fill the gap. You want a calling? Show up and do some work. Serve in a place where your service and your skill set is needed. All right. Girl, this is good. Because it's full of sugar. Mm. Number three. This last one for me has been the most challenging because of my own insecurities and nervousness, right? Number three is to share your gifts and talents freely. I wanna preface this by saying there is absolutely nothing wrong if God has blessed you with the path and the mindset to be able to monetize on things that you're good at, your gifts. If you are, just for example, a writer, and you're able to use your gift not only to bless people through your writing, but you're also able to sell your books, sell your poems, whatever. That's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. But I specifically want to speak to those of you who might be on the search for purpose. And you're like, well, I'm not sure what my purpose is and where I fit in this big picture of life. Think about the gifts and the talents that God has given you. It might be writing, it might be singing, it might be dancing, it might be painting, it might be, you might have a super uh, gift of organization or cleaning or I don't know, cutting lawns. Like, I don't, I don't know. It could be anything. Whatever your gifts or talents are, the areas in your life where you're just graced to do this thing. Think about that and think about ways in which you could share that gift with people freely. I'll give a real life example for myself. I write, I write stories, poems, all kinds of stuff. And so I realized that God began to show me people that I should be writing for. And I was kind of like, okay, that's cool. But like, I was so nervous. I was so nervous because I wasn't used to sharing particularly poems, poetry, I wasn't used to sharing the poems that I wrote with other people. It was like, you know, I'll write it and then it's in my little notebook and it's like one day I'll do something with this, but not anytime soon, right? God started to speak to me and told me that I needed to share my gifts with people because there were people that needed to read the words that I was writing. So there have been several people over the past year that I've written poems for and I get them printed up, put them in a little picture frame, you know, so they can stick it on the shelf or whatever. And, you know, I just present it to them and I'm like, hey, I wrote you this poem. I really hope you enjoy it. And when I tell you, it's been the most beautiful experience. First of all, yes, it was something that I was extremely nervous about. And I let God know, not that he didn't already know, but I was like, this makes me nervous. <laughs> like, because the things that I write really come from my heart and my soul. And so the thought of putting it in the hands of someone else, I'm like, dang, what if they don't understand it? Or what if like, you know, they don't like it. And I'm like, dang, you know, all the things. So that was number one. 
God has really shown himself as I, you know, was nervous about everything and prayed, I'm like, okay, Lord, if this is you speaking to me, telling me to write this poem for this person, let this go well. Because I'm like, you know, I'm not that obvious. He has shown himself to be extremely, extremely just faithful and good. Um, every poem that I've written for someone, especially for those that were in spaces where they really needed a healing word, God has either through the design, like the picture or whatever on the printout or the words themselves has always put something in the poem or in the colors or in the picture that, you know, I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay, that looks good. You know, I'm just going about my business and I ain't no super, like some supernatural thing happening while I'm writing. I'm just doing what, what God has blessed me and graced me to do. But as I share the poems with the people that he's instructed me to do so with, there's always something he puts in there that I couldn't have come up with myself. Something that touches them specifically so they know that this is from God. And I know, dang yeah, he really did tell me to give this to you because it's something beyond what I could have orchestrated myself. And that's just the power of the Holy Spirit. God is absolutely incredible. But I say all of that to say, Again, think about the gifts and talents that you have and how you could use them and pray about it. Pray about it because that was my thing. I prayed. I'm like, how can I be of service? What can I do to give back? Especially last year, like I didn't really have money to give, you know, or to go out and buy things to donate or whatever. So I was like, well, I still want to be of service in some type of way. And that's what the Lord spoke to me. So pray about it and ask God how how he wants you to use your gifts and talents today. It's not about, just like I said, it's not about how much money you have. It's not about, you know, how many friends you have, how many people you know, this and that. God has given you gifts and talents to share with his people in the world, people that need healing, people that need love, people that just need to know that somebody is thinking of them and cares about them and wants nothing in return. That's so powerful. It's so powerful and it's such a beautiful thing. So pray about it and ask God to lead you in the way that he wants you to share your gifts and talents. And to the point of living a purposeful, purpose-filled life, you know, you can have a lot of different things that you're good at, a lot of different ways that you can serve. And I want this video to help you maybe shift your perspective from thinking of your purpose on earth as being this one thing or this one path and seeing it as God has made you a beautiful, colorful, vibrant, you know, multi-talented person, which means that there are many, many ways that you can be of service, that you can be purposeful, that you can give back. So yeah. Think about it. <laughs> Just a few reminders before we close out this video. Number one, if you're anything like me, oh my gosh, when I was first kind of on the whole, like, what's my purpose type of journey or whatever, child was wanting to save the world. I was like, okay, I see all these issues and this and that, and people need love and this and that. And, it's okay to calm down. Calm down just a little bit. You know if I'm talking to you, calm down just a little bit. It's okay. You ain't got to be Superman. You ain't got to be Jesus. We already got him. Okay? You don't have to save the world. Start with your community. Start with your family. Start with the people, you know, that you see around you in close proximity. Get your feet wet. You ain't got to go out and be doing the most. But you do need to start. If purpose is something that desire to understand about yourself, the best thing you can do is get out into the community and actually do some work that is purposeful. But don't be concerned with saving the world or feeling like, well, I did this and I did that, but it's just not enough. Like, look at the status of the state of the world. It's okay. It's okay. Um, everything that you do that is good and in the name of the Lord it matters. It matters. Holding a door open for someone matters. 
saying thank you, please and thank you, it matters. Telling your grandma that you love her and spending time with her matters. Taking out the trash for the little old man that lives beside you, it matters. Starting small is the way to go, just start. The second reminder is simply to pay attention. Pay attention. It's so easy to be like, well, you know, I don't know, you know, who might need some help or this. Pay attention, pay attention. Take some time to get out of being caught up in yourself and your own life and what you got going on and just take a day or two or a weekend to just really pay attention and to look around you. And God will very easily reveal to you areas where people need help and people need service and areas where you might be able to step in and be of service. The third reminder is to be consistent in the way that you treat people. I can't stress this enough and it's something that I have to remind myself of every day because sometimes dealing with people can be extremely frustrating. It just is what it is. Hell, sometimes I frustrate people, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, like it is what it is in this human experience. But as best as you can, be consistent in the way that you treat people. When we're talking about purpose and being purposeful and being of service and this and that, there is a certain element of trust that kind of has to be built over time with people, especially with the people that you serve. And it's very important that you're consistent in the way that you treat people. Be kind, be courteous, be thoughtful, be thoughtful. Think of others and how your actions might affect them. Ask questions. Ask people questions. Don't just assume you know them, that you know their circumstances, or even if you really do know what's going on in their life, don't assume that you know how they feel about that. Ask questions and always approach situations with a heart of love. If your heart ain't right, don't be going trying to step into somebody else's business. And I'm here to serve. Girl, if your heart ain't right, that's the first thing you need to do is get on your knees and pray and continue to pray and ask God to help you with your own heart posture before you go trying to do this, that, and the third. Okay? <laughs> and the last and fourth and final reminder is God wants you to seek him first. We're talking about purpose, calling, all that kind of stuff, which there's nothing wrong with, but... Remember that God wants you to seek him first and everything else will be given unto you. Have you been spending more time seeking and searching for your purpose than you have been searching for and seeking the face of the one who gave you life? Don't get so caught up in what the world says about purpose and what the world says about service and what the world says about being a leader that you forget to first and foremost seek God. That's the most important relationship you will ever have. It's the most meaningful relationship you will ever have. It's the most purposeful relationship that you will ever have. If you want to live a life of purpose and meaning, get to know the Lord. Number one, get to know God. That's the most important thing that you can do. I hope this video was helpful. I hope I gave you a few tips that you can actually apply in your life. And again, don't forget, God first. God first. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Let me know which of my tips or reminders is one that you really do want to apply in your life going forward. I would love to know what y'all are thinking. Um, and what you plan on doing because this is, it's an ongoing process. You know, it's not just like, okay, I know my purpose or okay, I'm living a purpose filled life and you do one thing and then, you know, that's it. Like it's an ongoing process until we leave this place. So I'd love to know just what y'all are thinking and how you plan on moving forward. Also be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can see more content like this. Every time I post, I post a new video every Sunday at six o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. So be on the lookout, turn on those post notifications so you get the little notification when I post, okay? I just pray for all of you that are watching this that you will find ways to live a more purpose-filled life and that you would also grow closer to God in your journey. Okay, 
I love y'all.